Happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the men. And I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the women who are fulfilling that role of father. I first give glory and honor to our, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, to our pastor, Bishop Harold Spellman, our spiritual father in the Lord. And just for being here this morning to come together to acknowledge the position of fatherhood. I'd first like to give attention to our Heavenly Father. It's all because of Him. It's all because of Him. So when I say I want to give attention to, I want us to give attention to our Heavenly Father. We've just did some praise and worship, but I want us to stand, please, and purposefully give him praise. Personally, give him honor. We bless your name. Father God, Father God, we bless you today. We thank you today. We extol you today. We give first what is rightfully due to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for being an awesome God. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. I found a, a quote in psychology today, and it said, I just want to pull it up if you can, Reverend Coleman. It says, children who have involved fathers are more likely to be healthy emotionally, socially, and intellectually. Children who have involved fathers I want to propose to us this morning that we have an involved father. Amen. We have a father who is in our business, who cares about our souls, who cares about the little things that, we, that are meaningful to us. We have a father who is engaging in our lives. Some of us may have a history of a good father, or some of us have histories of not so good fathers, but our Heavenly Father Amen. is involved. Amen. Amen? To start out, you may be seated. I want to thank God for our spiritual father, Bishop Harold Spellman. I've uh, had the opportunity to, to serve in several churches and, of course, be exposed to a lot of ministry. May I say to this church body, we are blessed to have Bishop Harold Spellman as our pastor. He cares for our souls. Whether you see him or not, he's praying. How many of y'all know he's praying for us? He's praying for us, and he's there for us. I respect Bishop Harold Spellman. I want to start this morning by talking about my father. And I want to honor him. Uh, he's in heaven now. But I want to give you some information that you may not have, that I'm sure you don't have, regarding my father. Reverend Henry Glenn Davis. That's my daddy. I'd like to just share a couple things about him that are very special to me. Some of you may know and some of you may not know, but I was adopted. I was not his biological son. He chose me. Isn't that like Jesus? He chose us. It wasn't a happenstance. It was purposeful. And that knowledge in my life has made a difference. To know that I wasn't an afterthought. He and my mother 
thought about, do we want to bring this child into our life? They said yes, and I'm glad they did. I'm glad. Because the other option when I think about that was I could have been aborted. I could have been placed in a home that wasn't lovely, loving but abusive. That wasn't the case. I was placed in a loving, caring home because they chose me. My father built our house. I've never built a house. <laughs> now, let me tell you about my mother, just a sidebar. My father was somewhat delaying in starting the building of the house. So he came home one day and my mother had outlined the foundation and told him, get started. <laughs> the woman is always involved. <laughs> but my point is, he did things that I have yet to even consider to do. I don't see myself building a house. I mean, literally building a house. My father served honorably in the United States Army. My father taught me how to properly wash a car. Now, y'all may say, that ain't no proper way. Well, he taught me, you start from the top, the bottom. Now, I was going on the sides, and he said, boy, no, 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 no. My father taught me how to ride a bicycle. I remember him behind me holding the bicycle and saying, come on, you can do it. And then he pushed it out. And I went for quite a ways before I ran into the tree. But I did go. He taught me that. My father was an entrepreneur. Now, my father never graduated high school. But God anointed him. And so he was the first man to start a cab company, a taxi service, in Montgomery County, Maryland. Unfortunately, during those times, this was in the 50s, it was hard for a man of his color to maintain a business. But he started it and did the best he could. Yeah. My father was an ordained pastor, as was his father and eight of his brothers. My father went the extra mile for me. Meaning, I stand here today and I cannot tell you all of the things he did for me because I'm not aware of them. But I stand here as a result of them. Amen. My father loved me unconditionally. That sounds like Jesus to me. I remember two times specifically. One time was I had been out in my addiction overnight, and I didn't come home, and I'd run out of money. Some of y'all can relate to what I'm saying. I'd run out of money, money so there was no, nothing else to do, but I should have gone home, but I didn't. But what I did was I picked up the phone. In those days, there was no cell phones. There was a cell booth, a telephone booth. And I went to the telephone booth, picked up the phone, put it in the quarter. And I said, Dad, he says, the first words out of his mouth were, son. He says, where are you? I said, I'm wherever I was, I told him. And he said, before I tried to give a, a lie as an explanation, he said, come home. Come home. That's the kind of father I had. And when I got in my car and drove home, as I turned into our driveway, I looked at the end of the driveway, and there was my father standing there like this. He, he said, I don't care what's going on. Come home. I love you. Come home where it's safe. 
another time, he had had back surgery, and I was unable to go see him because I was in college at the time. But I finally got a chance to go see him, and he was laying on his back because he had just had surgery. And I walked into the room, and when he saw me, this still touches me. He says, my son, and grabbed me and hugged me. I'll never forget that. If there was ever doubt in my mind about his love for me, it evaporated. The moment he, the way he said, my son, the way he held me, it was like all that stuff that I wanted to hold against him. Some of y'all know, as children, we, we can point out our parents' faults and their, what they didn't do and what they could have done. and All that melted away. Okay, another reason it melted away as of today is because now I'm his age and I understand better. You got to give a little grace and mercy as people are growing up. Another time my father said to me, we were talking about something and I needed something and I could always go to my dad and say, dad, whatever the need was. And this particular time when I went, he said, son, I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't, I can't do that. I don't have it to give. I don't have the money. I don't have the wherewithal. And then he pulled me close to himself. He said, I want you to know that if I had it, you would have it. If it was in my ability to give it to you, you would have it. And I knew that he meant that. He said, if I had it, whatever it was you need, I would give it to you. And I was assured that it, it wasn't because he didn't want to give it to me. It was because he couldn't. And so when he passed... When my father passed, I, I wrote a song in his honor. And the song is from the scriptures that I want us to look at this morning. It's in Acts where Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but such as I have, give I thee. I want to play that song for you. There's no words to it. There's no words. It's just a short melody. But it represents everything that I felt toward him and still feel toward him based on the fact that he, I know he loved me, he cared for me, and wanted the best for me. So if you would just fix your hearts to receive this musical tribute to my dad. Thank you. <laughs> Such as I have, give I thee.
I'd like for us to look at the scripture in Acts, third chapter. It's a familiar chapter. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Could we start at the very first verse, please? Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Could we have the New Living Translation, please? Verse 1, please. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon noon, to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the, the Nazarene, get up and walk. I want to propose to us today that sometimes we don't have money to give. Have you ever walked down the street of a city and somebody approaches you and say, hey man, you got a couple dollars? You got a cigarette? You got a fill in the blank? Sometimes you can answer that and sometimes you can't. Or sometimes you pull out what the best that you can do. I want to propose to the fathers today that if you have nothing else to give to your children. If you have the name of Jesus, that's more than enough. If you have Jesus to give them, that's more than enough. As I stand here this morning, last night I received a text from what I would call, I, don't have, I do not have any biological children, but I have some spiritual sons. And one of my spiritual sons texted me last night and said, thank you for pouring into me. Thank you for what you did in my life. And he said, this morning, he said, this morning, I'll be preaching at my church. I thought that was awesome. Here I am, his father in the Lord. I'm preaching, and my son is preaching somewhere else. As you're sitting here, you, you may be saying, you know, I'm hearing all these good things about a dad, but my experience with a father wasn't good. I didn't have a good father. My story isn't a happy one. I have something to say to those of you that did not experience that. The Bible says, honor your parents. It doesn't then say if. There's no if in that phrase. It says, honor your mother and your father. 
So how, how do you honor someone that has brought pain into your life? How do you honor someone that wasn't present in your life? It's possible to do that. I have a couple things I'd like to propose to you. One of the things that you have to do is be willing to forgive their transgressions. Now, forgiveness is an act of your will. It's not that that person or that father can go back and make things right. If you've been saved, you extend that same grace and that same mercy that was extended to you. Amen? Amen? Another thing. Extend that grace and mercy. It may be hard to do. You may have to take a deep breath and say they don't deserve it. Well, neither did we. Neither did we. Next. Be kind. Don't go with an attitude. Some of us don't want to release some of these things. May I say, especially in this situation where we are right here at Pinal, some of our addictions are fueled by unforgiveness. Because what happened to us, the neglect, the abuse, is real. And so for anybody to fight you on that, they would never win because it really did happen. That's where you apply the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ to that area and get healing that you're able to move on. Otherwise, you, the rest of your life can be affected by unforgiveness. Next thing. Cut them some slack. Come on. Come on. What I mean by that is, as I said before, as you grow older, you realize that a lot of things that your parents did, they did the best they could. And so those things, I remember telling my dad one time, uh, he, he was a preacher, and so one day I got mad at him. I said, I don't want to ever hear you preach again. Now, I was right in my own eyes because I was mad he had done something. I, he says, okay, son. And he said, just keep living. That's what he told me. Just keep living. Well, thank God I kept living. And I came to find out that I needed a lot of grace and mercy. Because some of the things that I could point out about him, he wasn't a perfect dad and neither are any of us. But see, in my childlike eyes, I'm viewing, well, you're supposed to be perfect. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. It didn't hold true for when I grew up and became a man. And so I cut him some slack. Some of the things he did, I've done worse. Some of the things I said I would never do, I've done worse. So let's have some grace and mercy extended to our, our fathers. God is a loving and kind God. Did I have another one? That's what I thought, okay. He's a kind and loving God. One of the things that I noticed in this scripture that we were reading, you can get so used to your situation that it becomes normal. This man at the pool, that, where they carried him in to the temple, he was born lame. So that's all he knew. And I feel that he came not to have any sort of expectancy for more than that. They would bring him in, he would sit at the gate, and he would beg for money when people came in. So he was used to, can I have, can I have a dollar? Can I have five dollars? And the people were used to seeing him there too. And they would give what they would give. But then he came upon Peter, and Peter didn't buy it. He put his, I'm, I'm just saying this, he put his hand out to Peter and Peter said, mm, not, no, no, I don't have that for you. I don't have that for you. 
And I dare say that he, the man was probably disappointed. So that's where that line comes from. Peter said, I don't have any money, any gold or silver to give you, but such as I have, I give unto you. Can we put that scripture up again? Let's go to verse 4, I think it is. Okay. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us. You got to first get somebody's attention. Get their attention. Take him out of where he was used to be. He was used to sitting there, just being there. Peter challenged him to say, look up, look at me. Next verse. And so the man looked up, gave attention to Peter. Rather, I can imagine he was just taking money. People would come in here, here, here. He would take it, take it. But Peter said, no, 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 no. I need your attention. God is saying, I need your attention. This morning, he needs our attention. He needs my attention. Why? Because he's wanting to do something out of the ordinary. Next verse. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus. Is that the NIV? Could I get the NIV version, please? Because I want to show you something now. Can we go back to four again? Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. Next verse. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Next verse. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Next verse. Now, look at this. Taking him by the right hand, he went beyond talking and engaged the man. This is the part sometimes we don't get about our relationship with Christ. There is always that part, me and God. But God always involves people on some level. So here comes the people part. He said, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. Imagine him taking his hand, not putting something in his hand, but taking his hand. When you take somebody's hand with power and, in, and intent, that hand has power. And I believe when he held his hand, he took his hand and was telling him, get up out of that spot. Okay, he helped him up, and instantly, the man who was born lame and knew nothing else other than being lame did something he had never done before. He instantly helped him up. Instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. Next verse. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. When you're used to a certain situation, you can get stuck there. Sometimes you need somebody to challenge you, to shake yourself, and get up. This morning, I want to challenge you. What is that comfortable place that you're in where God wants to take you by the hand and say, no, 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 I know, I know you're lame, but guess what? There's something beyond lame. I know you have an addiction, but there's something beyond addiction. Put your hand in my hand and let me help you up. Now, see, the challenge is when you're helped up, there's the challenge to be responsible for the maintenance of staying up. When you've been used to sitting down all your life, and sitting down could be not doing what you were intending to do or a goal that's not accomplished. But allow the Holy Spirit today to challenge each one of us, wherever we are, to rise up from that place of comfort. And it may not even have been a comfortable place, but we just got used to it. Allow ourselves to be challenged to come up. Amen? Amen. I want to give to you, before I close today, I want to give you some practical things that you can do for your father today. Practical things that you can do for your father 
today. The day is just beginning. This is the beginning of Father's Day. Consider this. Write your father a heartfelt letter. In today's world, letters are rare. Everything's text, types, voicemail, whatever. But take a time to write. Writing is not popular today. But take time to write your father a what kind of letter? Something that you mean. Something that he can hold on to and look at in the years and days to come that will mean much more to him than anything you could say. As I get older, when I get cards, I look at them a different way. They mean more to me now than they did before, just because of where I am. So I suggest to you, write your dad a letter from your heart, something that when you're not around, he can just look at and be reminded of your love for him. Number two. Purpose to live a life that brings honor to his name. Purpose to live a life that brings honor to your father's name. To your father's name. To your father's name. When you make decisions in your life, think about how will this reflect on my dad? If I do this, how will this make him look. Purpose to live a life that brings honor to his name. Next. Participate in his favorite hobby. Get out of yourself and find out what he likes and go do what he likes. We're easy to say, come on, do what I like. But purpose to do what he likes. Take a moment. That means you intently. Now, if he knows you as a son, he knows you don't like to do it. He already knows that. So when you do do it, it's a sign that, hey, Dad, I'm going to give you this consideration for this moment. Amen? Amen. Next. Cook his favorite meal. How many people like to eat in here? Now, all you raise your hand because it's true. Well, I think most people like to eat. But cook his favorite meal. I know you're on a diet. I know that you're eating healthy. But he likes pork chops and gravy. <laughs> cook them. One meal. Amen? Amen? Next. Make a bucket list of activities you would like to do with your dad. The Bible says write your vision down. Sometimes things don't happen because we don't plan for them to happen. So today, Father's Day, write down some things that you would like to ultimately do with your dad. Amen? Amen. God, our Heavenly Father, is a loving and caring God. He sought us out. He found us. We have a wonderful father. Amen. A loving father. A caring father. Now, being father, we have given him the right to discipline us. So don't yell and scream when he says, listen, I need to help you with something here. Okay. The Bible talks about, there's two scriptures I thought about, the Bible says about uh, fathers. It says, fathers, don't provoke your children. Here it is. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Okay? Some of our children don't love God because of what they see us do. Not what we say, but what we do. That's provoking. So it's a challenge for us. We're not perfect. We know that. But it's a challenge for us to check ourselves from time to time. Are we really being those examples of a loving father? What's the other example that we had? 
train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart. Do what you know to do according to God. And even though your child, as he matures or she matures, will go here and go there and do this and do that, that seed is in them. How many of y'all grew up in the church a little bit? Remember being in church? I look, I look at all these young children that we have around here. I was, I remember when I was four, my father, he was pre, when I, I didn't get, at the age of four, I gave my life to the Lord. Now, I didn't know what that meant, but because my father was standing here and I was there and I heard him Sunday after Sunday talking about Jesus, in my little mind, I was thinking, you know what, I, at some point I got to get to Jesus, whatever that meant. I didn't even know what it meant. I was coming out of the Baptist church. They were not talking about necessarily being saved. They said, join the church. Well, that still was a step closer to God. So that, I remember that Sunday morning, I decided, well, you know what? I'm going I'm to join the church today. So I marched myself right up there. And my father said, what do you want? I said, well, you said the doors of the church are open. Anybody that wants to join, come on. I said, here I am. And I believe, and I know, not believe, I know that God honored my childlike heart. I, 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 didn't know, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it meant, but I knew I was obeying my father. And as a result, this may be a sidebar to this, but when I did that, in my mind, that was a huge thing. And it was. It was huge. But I didn't realize how huge or what it meant. But literally, within two weeks of doing that, the Lord gave me the gift of music. Okay. And, wh and what I mean by that is, I hadn't played or thought about music at all at four years of age. But my family, we lived in a community, and in my community, it was my house, my grandmother's house, my uncle's house across the street was my uncle's house, my uncle's house, my uncle's house. <laughs> Around the corner was my uncle's house. My, so we lived like that. But my grandmother had a uh, old piano. When I say that, some of you may not have seen it. But there were old pianos that had a huge upright back. And she had one of those. And after that Sunday of joining the church, I went to my grandmother's house and just sat down at the piano and start. From nothing came something. May I say to you, that that you hear coming out of me is a gift. And I, I know it is. I know it is. And I value it. One of the things I said to the Lord regarding my gift, I said, Lord, if it's possible, I want when I play that it's just like I'm speaking. Like it's a voice speaking to people. God is good. God is good. If we can, I'd like for all the fathers to stand, please. All the fathers. Amen. And wherever you are, if you would just point your hands at the fathers, I want to pray for them today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we present each father that's standing today, Lord. Father, touch them afresh today. Father, may something that's been said today or something through the Holy Spirit that will affirm their fatherhood, that they and we are representatives of Christ first. Help us to become more like you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the gift of fatherhood. It wasn't a mistake. You've called us to be fathers, and we accept that role. Touch us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I would now like, you may be seated, I would like for the women who are holding forth your house.
You're the, you're the woman in that house representing the man and the woman. If you would stand, if you don't mind, I'm not trying to embarrass anyone, if you feel led to start to stand. I honor you ladies today. We honor you. Okay. We honor you. And we stand with you. And God stands with you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift these women of God up to you, Lord. Continue to strengthen them. Father, may I, may I say on behalf of the men, if there should be men that are present, that should be present that are not, I repent of that, that we as men are not taking our rightful place or doing what we should do. Father, may that not be in the future. But right now, we speak strength to this, these families. Father, may there be no lack because of the lack of a man's presence. Strengthen them, encourage them today for your glory, for their good, and for their children's good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Be a father. Be what God has called you to be. Even if, like myself, even if you're not a father, find somebody to mentor. Find someone to speak into their life. Amen? I'm going to ask you to stand, please. Perhaps you're one of those people that didn't have a loving family or loving father or what that. I want to pray for the healing of anything like that. If you, just raise your hand if you have been wounded by lack of a father or anything or abuse or anything like that. Because the power of Almighty God can heal you. And we didn't come here today just to play church. The power of the Holy Spirit can heal us from anything. So, Father, we stand with the brokenhearted, with those who have been abused right now in Jesus' name. Father, we speak healing in the name of Jesus, deep within their hearts, Lord. Take out the pain of lack. Replace that with your presence. Replace that with your peace. May this no longer be a hindrance to them going forward or knowing who they are in you. Satan, in the name of Jesus, we counsel your plans out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we speak life, we speak healing, restoration, and mighty power for your glory, God, and for our good. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you.